Good afternoon. My name is Maria Thompson. I am an honor student at Valencia College wanting to discuss the issues that surround in-school suspension programs as I feel it is of great importance. My objective is not to try and persuade you to take a stand on the issue, rather inform you on what factors contribute to students' misbehavior, what is currently the process with in-school suspension, specifically within Orange County Public Schools, and better educate the public on what can help the issue, as well as provide my own proposed idea in helping provide a better education experience for students. My topic today is reforming in-school suspension, best practices, and improving students' behavior. I will be summarizing the key elements on what has worked within such programs in the past and what has not. I will provide you an overview on the background of this project, present you my research question and hypothesis, briefly discuss my approach and methodology, and provide you the results. I will then conclude with providing you proposed solutions to the issue as well as acknowledgements behind the study. Because this session is inevitably technical in nature, I want to assure you that substantial work was put into this over the past several months and is an unceasing and possibly continuous project. So please consider this a first prog progress report, if you will. Upon conducting my research for this project, I began with looking into how in-school suspension is defined at the national, state, and county levels. The county and state levels share the same Florida statute, but the Orange County Public Schools Student Code of Conduct goes into further explanation on what they offer within their county. The Positive Alternative to School Suspension Program, or PASS, is a form of in-school suspension that provides intervention through targeted behavioral practices for students that committed a level two, three, or four behavioral infraction under the Student Code of Conduct. Though the description for what is offered for PASS is brief, there is a lot more expectations placed on each school's in-school suspension monitor in terms of the day-to-day -day agenda that can and has provided an adverse result to students academically. So let us explore what factors have played a role in terms of misbehavior, because in essence, that is partially the reason in-school suspension exists. Regarding what has worked in terms of improving behaviors, restorative practices, which involve a plethora of forms like written agreements, circles of peacemaking, family group conferences, and mediation between the victim and the offender, just to name a few. Many of the studies research that is within the literature review regarding restorative practices is based upon building relationships. Another system that has worked in improving misbehavior, which is being included in many schools within the nation, is Positive Behavioral Interventions and Support, or PBIS, which is a tier level system that provides replacement strategies based on a complete observation of a student and what triggers their misbehavior. When speaking of what has not worked in terms of misbehavior, it is important to look at factors that indirectly play a role in that. One primary reason for misbehavior is due to not being able to relate or trust educators and or the school's faculty or personnel as a student. In a study regarding in-school suspension and its role in misbehavior, students who were interviewed admitted to feeling in-school suspension is boring. Another study showed that educators admitted to a lack of knowledge when dealing with misbehavior that can stem from a mental disorder such as attention deficit hyperactive disorder or autism spectrum disorder, which has caused for these types of students, specifically African-American males, to be labeled negatively. This pattern can be in direct relation to the types of implicit biases that educators may project onto their students. In connection to those implicit biases, the disparity involving race connecting to those biases is an issue as well. Studies have shown that students do better academically when being taught by a teacher of their same race. As public schools in Florida continue to become more diverse racially and ethically, the importance of matching that diversity with educators becomes greater. 
The school that will be used in terms of providing collected data to is Orange County Public Schools Academic Center for Excellence, or ACE, which is an alternative school within Orange County. Serving as a volunteer at ACE, I noticed that there were certain gaps that they face as a school with the lack of resources and the results that followed the lack of accountability neighboring teacher-student relationships. Being able to experience firsthand how things are operated in their past program, it is easy to say there serves a need for reconstructing their curriculum, which they were in process of doing when I volunteered this past spring semester and continue to do so now. The purpose of the study is to review the process and policies of the ACE PASS program. In addition to redesigning the curriculum, it is important to look at what factors play a role in preventing suspension. In collaboration with ACE faculty, staff, and administration, the plan is to interview experts in the field in order to create a proposal suited for the needs of the student at the school. Are the current processes in place for in-school suspension, specifically the past program within Orange County Public Schools, enough for students to do better both behaviorally and academically, or is a reconstruction for the program needed? Based on the literature review, the in-school suspension program is in need to be reformed. There were a total of seven participants one behavioral analyst, one college professor that specializes in school, in classroom management, excuse me, one college professor that specializes in the PBIS system, and four educators that range from elementary to high school. All have been in their respected fields for at least eight years or more and work within or in conjunction with Orange County Public Schools. Methods included one-on-one -on -one interviews and a survey questionnaire. Participants were recruited via email communication through the Valencia College site or through the social media networking site, Facebook Messenger. Within each interview, there were about seven to 10 questions asked, which changed based on the occupational background of the participant, and the interview lasted between 40 to 50 minutes. The survey was constructed via Google Docs and a link was provided to each participant surveyed. The survey consisted of 10 questions, four multiple choice questions, and six essay questions. Once the participants submitted the survey, a confirmation message was sent to the researcher. When speaking of whether in-school suspension programs as they are now help in improving behavior, all participants agree that isolation does not work. Instead, it is treated more like a break for the student. When discussing what kind of mental stressors lead to misbehavior, things like homelessness, financial instability, family violence, child mistreatment in the home, and academic struggles were brought up. When discussing if teachers have a lack of support, most of the participants said yes, with one stating that it is more of a systemic issue projecting many expectations on educators. Lastly, when touching on the topic of restorative practices, very few educators advise that it is used in their school, with one educator stating, behavior serves a function so we need to understand what the function of the behavior was, implying that before replacement strategies are proposed to the student who struggle with misbehavior, the root cause of the misbehavior needs to be investigated. And these are just some of the results based on the questions that were asked. From the results of the study, as suggested by the educator that specializes in PBIS, the monitor that oversees the in-school suspension program should be a person who is trained in engaging students academically as well as trained in replacement strategies to misbehavior. Proper training for educators and building student-teacher relationships is also needed, which can be done by implementing the PBIS system. In addition to this multi-tiered framework, Providing psychological behavioral interventions and socio-emotional development will allow for 
an overall better experience within in school suspension that would bring about a positive result in students upon the completion of their time. In drawing this presentation to a close, I'd like to suggest a form of online socio-emotional learning called Maui Learning. The lessons are about four to six slides and helps develop interpersonal skills, self-motivational skills, critical thinking skills, and problem-solving skills. Maui Learning provides tools that can improve confidence and mental growth of the student, as well as renew the love of learning all through socio-emotional development. Before I go, I'd like to express my gratitude to my wonderful mentor for whom I couldn't complete this project without, Dr. Melanie Sexton. I'd also like to acknowledge Professor Jane McGuire, whom I completed the research portion with, and Dr. Brighton, who encouraged me to take on this undergraduate research project in the first place. I'd also like to acknowledge Orange County Public Schools Academic Center for Excellence. I am thankful for the opportunity to have been able to volunteer with them, and I'm pretty sure this won't be the last they see of me. I want to thank the participants in the study who all provided great answers and suggestions regarding possible solutions, as well as Google Docs and Zoom for providing me the means to complete the interviews and surveys. This concludes my presentation. Thank you.